Welcome everyone to questions and answers series on the law of assumption with Adelaide Additional. I am Uluwashi and I will be moderating your questions for Adelaide to answer. Good afternoon, sir. Hello everyone, um, Adelaide Additional here and it's my pleasure to answer your questions. Alright, so first on our list today is from Faith. And Faith says, when I keep going, when I keep saying I am financially independent in my head, is that inner speech? Yes, that is an inner conversation. Uh, the word inner means it is done mentally, just in your mind or in your consciousness. That's where you're dec decreeing or declaring it. And the word conversation or speech means uh, you can understand it has a meaning a definite meaning it communicates to you. it's like you could say it in a dialogue to somebody so can I can you say the word <coughs> I am financially independent or financially free to a person in a conversation yes you can you can say it to yourself you can say it to somebody else so when you keep that going on in your mind that's an inner speech so that's yes Alright, thank you very much for that answer. Right. Our next question is from Tochuku. And Tochuku asks, can I do two imaginal acts simultaneously? For instance, if I want a job or a business at the same time, want to sell a property? Yes, you can. There is nothing stopping you from having multiple imaginal scenes. Um, what you must do is to imagine them one after another okay so simultaneously doesn't mean you imagine two of them at once because you can't you just end up messing up the meanings or the feeling which each one of them is meant to have excuse me so what we have is this every imaginal scene every inner conversation has its own unique specific feeling attached to it so when you imagine the sale of your property it has a unique sensation that comes with it you focus on that you enjoy that satisfaction then you wake up from that imaginal scene and move on to the next or even as your eyes are closed we just switch and I use this analogy to explain it you know you go on your Instagram reels or your Facebook reels and you're scrolling from one to another so you watch a particular one for like four or five times because it's so good and after you're done with it you move on to the next maybe that's also so good so what do you do? you watch it for another three four or five times before you go on to the next that's the way you slide it in your mind so you do the first repeatedly when you have the feeling of the wish fulfilled you go on to the second if you have ten you can do all ten but you go from the first to the second to the third this is pretty much what you do when you revise your day. You're simply going from one scene to another to another throughout the day and changing it in your mind to the idea you wish it to be. So yes, you can. All right? All right. Thank you very much. Our next question is from Kaz. That's okay. the name here. Do we have to persist or do it once and let it go? And if we want a desire, do others have free will? What if we both want the same things? Okay, so I think we have three questions there. The first question, do we have to persist or do we do it just once and let it go? So I think we have three questions there. So I think we have three questions there. The first question, do we have to <coughs> persist? In imagining a desire or do we let it go I believe that the um, answer to that question is yes both you persist and you let go you persist in the assumption you let go of the desire desire is not the same mental state as satisfaction and you must persist in the satisfaction in fact the only way you know that you've let go of the desire is if you have the persistent assumption of the wish fulfilled take the example of being a mother so you have the baby nine months in your womb you give birth to the baby one day and now this baby is now yours and you're now a mother right to the baby so once you become a mother do you like go ah 
I'll be a mother only for uh, the moment when I'm doing the assumption and then, and then I'll not be a mother anymore after that you always be a mother you always be conscious of being a mother right you can be conscious of not being a mother anymore because you already are a mother the same goes here you have that particular idea you assume that it is yours you stay in the assumption so you can't hold that desire anymore that's what you let go of the desire they wanting to think of how to get it they wanting to think of what to do to get it even you wanting to construct newer sins maybe newer sins will be faster to get it you let go of all of that and then you persist in the assumption that you already have it now i'll take that to be the first question uh, the second question is do we have free will yes you have free will absolutely uh, do all the people have free will relative to you no to themselves yes well, as far as you're concerned everybody is just uh, a plant a tree in your garden right as far as you're concerned so you have the person who has to decide what you want they are going to conform to your mental state yeah they all conform to your mental state that is something not so easy for people to hear or even to say so I know that sometimes you might not uh, come across this being said even in the law of assumption community but that is what it is you are the person who has to decide what you want people don't have free will to you you are the person who has the free will to choose only your ideas that you are assuming to be true you don't even have the free will to say um, choose the actions that you take the behaviors that you have all the uh, decisions that you make you only have the free will of the state of consciousness that you embody that's all you do now they also have their own free will but not as far as your world is concerned only in their world they can choose the ideas that they're entertaining they can choose the beliefs that they're holding to be true of themselves and then i think there is a follow-up question to that which is for example if i want something that someone else wants uh how does that work they this is a question that requires you to understand that consciousness is the one and only reality and there is nothing else but consciousness in this world although now manifested in multiple levels uh, with so many billions of us across different worlds we are still the same one consciousness so what you desire is so specific and unique to you someone else won't want that not the same time not the same place not the same um, moment when you want it I assure you someone else wouldn't if it appears that two people want the same thing then one of them is definitely conditioning what they want one of them is not being honest with their desires that said another thing that could be very noteworthy to say is that if you have a desire you literally would be standing people that will be standing in your presence would be people that are necessary for the fulfillment of that desire not that would conflict with you upon that desire all right because the moment you assume a wish is fulfilled you call into your world everything that is necessary to make it happen and i could just maybe close this question on uh, a simple example a practical one and it is this on a level of competition for riches for money okay when people don't understand the state of being really rich they, they feel other people are competitors. If I'm rich, then it's because I've taken money from others. And if uh, I'm not as rich, then maybe it's because um, I'm not taking money from, uh, they're taking money from me. But that is a poor way of thinking about it because actually rich people like to be allies. They don't like to compete. That's the beautiful thing. Imagine two people want a million dollars each and the two of them actually come together as allies. They're not competing, they can't. They can't go, I'm the one that will take your a million dollar, you're the one that will take my million dollar. Both of them, as in they have it, they get to be allies. They get to build an empire together. Or they get to work whatever way they do, but not as competitors. So at the fundamental level, the answer is that no, you wouldn't be together with a person that would have the same exact desire as you do in the same room as they even feel that you're competing with them when using the law of assumption okay so that's the answer to your question
Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Um, the next question is from Fred. And Fred is asking, when assuming, is it necessary to keep repeating the scene? And is there any point in taking inspired actions? All right. Very two good questions there. The first one, when assuming, is it necessary to repeat the scene? Yes, it is. Repetition is a part of the process in both imaginal acts and inner conversations. Not all scenes get repeated frequently before you assume the nature of really having them. Okay, some scenes you, you do it just once, some scenes you do it just three times, some you could do them night after night for a month. Neville stripped Barbados, he assumed it and repeated the scene night after night for six weeks. That's about 42 days, isn't it? Okay, so. He did it for 42 days and then out of the blue, he went to Barbados. The lesson is that repetition is important. Set your mind upon it that you would do the same. You will continue in it until you have the feeling of assurance that it is done. Until you know for sure it is done. Until you have that relief. That knowing, that satisfaction in you that you already have your wish fulfilled. That is on the one path. On the other end... <clears throat> Um, inspired actions are it necessary for you to take them in order to achieve a particular goal the answer to that is that you don't have to try figuring out what inspired action is when the person says I'm trying to take inspired action I look at you just let's ask what do you really mean by that do you mean you are trying to do something that you think or you believe or you have the intuition is necessary for you to do before you can have the results that you want if that's what you're saying then that is not an inspired action that is a, a strategy you're trying to take if it is an inspired action you wouldn't know you are taking it until you've taken it and all actions are inspired from the state of consciousness that you are in if you're sleeping that's because you have to sleep according to the state of consciousness that you're in if you're waking that's because you have to wake according to the state of consciousness that you're in people don't realize it but the state of consciousness you're in chooses the clothes you wear, the people you meet, the time you get to the bus station, the kind of bus that you meet, that you get on, the people that are standing in front of you when you get on the bus, or on the train, or in the airplane, and uh, the people that are working for you, it determines everything that happens in your life. Whether you try to take a deliberate action or you don't. You are inspired by the state of consciousness that you are in. You don't have to figure it out. The all of life is inspiration. What do we mean by inspired? It means God breathed. Okay? Inspire. Breathed from within. God breathed. Tell me something that a person does in this life that wasn't first imagined or that's not known to God or that is not approved of God. There is nothing. So that means the only thing you have to do is to believe it. Don't try going on taking inspired action, not taking inspired action. It's not the question. Read Free Will, chapter 21 of Power of Awareness. And Neville says, the question is often asked, what should a person do between, take note of this, between the assumption of the wish fulfilled and its realization? Two points. I assume the wish fulfilled. Realization. So the question is often asked, what should a person do? And the simple answer he gave is nothing. He said, do nothing. If a person goes, oh, well, do nothing means don't try to do anything to get it done, but uh, maybe inspired action, you can do that. I wonder, how does nothing get to have meanings of some things? It's you do nothing. All right? So that's the answer to your questions. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Our next question is from Donald. And Donald is asking that, is it imagination that creates reality or imagination together with feelings that... or imaginations together with feelings that create imagination? Okay, they probably meant that create reality. Reality, yes. Okay, um, the answer to that question is simple. There is really no distinction between imagination and feeling. It is imagination that creates reality. That is something Neville said hundreds of times 
across his lectures and books imagination creates reality there is even a lecture that has just that title imagination creates reality there is a pamphlet that has just that title imagination creates reality so that's something he said and thought uh, throughout his career there is no distinction because when you say feeling the question is where is your feeling where are your feelings centered they're only your imagination that's where feelings are now take note of this when you want to create an experience into this physical world you want to make something happen you want something to be experienced by you physically you imagine it and then you feel what it is like that it is true that you experienced it that is no doubt that is a very certain thing you must do feeling is the secret of your imagination but what is called feeling is still an imaginal event or it's an imaginal experience it's not something physical if i close my eyes and i put myself away from this place and i put myself in say the netherlands and i assume that i'm there um, having a wonderful moment talking to um, lillian and we're chatting and discussing some things maybe about love assumption about life or whatever else then what am i doing if I feel that real, that is still imagining. The feeling that I have, if I could describe the feeling to you and I go, oh, I feel satisfied, oh, I feel the thrill, and I'm still imagining. The feeling is still an imaginal event, all right? Imagination creates reality. To make it work, you must imagine to the point that your imagination has a feeling or evokes a feeling in you of the wish fulfilled. That's what you called upon to do. So that's the answer to your question. All right. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Our next question is Scarlett. And Scarlett okay. says, what happens when you have a financial obligation but got to a point of not feeling any urgency or sense of lack even when jobless? Looking for jobs but, like, bills don't matter. Is this against manifestation? let me see if i understand that question what happens when you have a financial emergency then that, that means you have some things you want to settle some payments that are due to people but you don't feel the tension of that you don't feel tense to settle them and so are you saying you're looking for the job is that what you're saying that they're looking for a job so like, or that they're not trying to look for a job at all so they are looking for the jobs but the bills don't matter like they do not they do not put on the tension of the bills okay is that against manifestation yeah no it's not there is nothing for against manifestation everything is an experience of your consciousness the only questions you want to ask yourself because this is not uh it's not like there's a rule for this or a rule against this it's a question of your personal choice. Your personal choice, you ask yourself a question, which is, what do I want? That's all. Do I want to clear my bills? Do I want to get a job and then use the money there to settle my bills? Or do I just want to live freely, have my bills handled, and never have to worry about a job because I always have money? If this question is about, can you have money without getting a job or should you manifest having the money without the job uh, the simple answer is that you can and if that's what you want go ahead and do it but you don't have to think that is the only way you have to leave you don't have to think oh I have to get a job or no I shouldn't have to get a job just ask yourself what do I want the answer to that is what you imagine do I want financial security then imagine that do I want to settle my bills? Then imagine that. Do I want um, to have a job? Then imagine that. Okay? Imagine whatever you want to imagine. I would recommend you that you go through a story, a fantastic one, in chapter, I believe it's chapter 7 now, of The Law and the Promise. It is Moves. That's the title of the chapter, Moves. So in case it's not chapter 7, just look for the title, the chapter that is titled Moves in the law and the promise now never shared a story of a woman who had um she was 55 years old which i think is the case or the condition of so many people even in today's world 55 years old doesn't have a job and frankly she didn't know where the money was going to come from 
for settling all of her bills. She was already due on rent and she was feeling frustrated. She couldn't get a job. Not that she doesn't even have a job alone, but even if she tried, being a 55 year old woman back in the 1970s, 1960s, it's difficult to get a job. So she found everything difficult for herself. She wanted a new car and all of those stuff. So what she did was this. She listed out everything she wanted, decided one day, why didn't I use the um, lessons of Neville? I've been reading this man's lectures, I've been attending his lectures, reading his books, why didn't I apply what he has been teaching to my, imagine, uh, to my situation? So she listed out everything she wanted from the first to the last. A new uh, apartment, a new car, um, she wants clothes in her closet because she she said she didn't even have clothes that were presentable as to even look for a job, right? So clothes in her uh, closet, new ones. She wants to be able to travel around the world, go on vacations, and she wants um, so much money she doesn't have to worry about any of her basic living. So what? That's what she assumed. She simply began to imagine the ecstasy of having all of this settled, and this was the inner speech she used. Isn't it wonderful? Something wonderful is happening to me right now. She practiced that for two months. About the second month, between the second and the third month, something occurred. Someone came to her, wanted to travel to New York, discussed with her about New York, which she had lived in. So she talked about it, mentioned an old friend she had there. That person went to New York, met the old friend. He brought her up, said, I know this person. They talked about her. And the old friend is now wealthy. And what he did was he simply began to send checks to her. Just decided to send checks to her every month. She never wrote a thank you note for him. And she, he continued to send checks to her. And then finally, he sent a document to her, uh, which when she signed it, she was going to be saving money for the rest of her, of her life from the office of his attorney. That was it. And the money he was sending was so good, so, but so big, that she was able to handle all of her daily expenses, buy herself a new car, buy herself clothes, that is over time, of course, able to go on vacations, able to buy herself a new apartment from that money. So, use your imagination. Don't you try bothering or figuring out how you're going to settle your expenses. Your imagination will handle that quite all right. That's the answer to your question, Scarlett. All right. This is from a top fan, um, Ifeatu Kala. Okay. And she says, Thank you, Adeliri. There is a Neville quote I keep seeing something about believing that which you have imagined. Neville says something along the lines of, If only you will believe in your imagined picture or something. My question is, not all imaginative acts become our reality. Is Neville implying that we should believe? all our imagination imagined pictures or scenarios in like once you have imagined you should perceive it as a fact already we believe in it in it make it rea realize in the 3d quicker yes uh not only quicker that is the only way you believe whatever you this is the prayer in scriptures it says whatever you desire when you pray so that is you imagining. When you pray, that's like an imaginal act or an inner speech. Believe that you have received it. So you accept it as a fact. And you will. So that is a, so that's the way out. And that is why Neville absolutely mentioned it. Now, let me just give you a simple tone of clarity. So you don't think like, oh, there are so many things that we have to do here. We have to believe, we have to feel, we have to do inner speech, we have to assume. assume. It's all the same thing. Believing is what we mean by feeling. Faith is feeling. You'd find this in some Neville's works. For example, if you read Feeling is a Secret, chapter 4, it mentioned this there. Faith is feeling. Believing is feeling. So when you feel the reality of your imaginal act, that is you believing. That is how you believe. Alright? And it is necessary for you to do that if you want it to harden into facts. Because... When you accept something as being real, as um, a substantial fact in your imagination, then you give it permission to be manifested in this physical world. Until you do that, it's not going to happen. So, believing is, feeling is the secret, right? So, believing is absolutely essential. 
And yes, you're also right. What we don't believe doesn't happen. Uh, you can imagine from today till tomorrow, if you don't accept it as real, what you're imagining, it wouldn't happen. Acceptance as reality doesn't necessarily mean you're going and putting in effort to accept it. It just means you have the conviction that it's that what you imagine is an actual thing to the point that you even react as if it's an actual thing in your mind. That's all. Okay, so if you could see a person telling you, I don't believe it, but they really believe in it because they accept what they're talking about as a fact in their mind. That's the answer to your question. All right, then. Thank you very much. Um, Diviana asks a question. She says, Is it normal to feel like I don't want to imagine a scene anymore? that I am creating and that scene that is also implying the same wish fulfilled. Like I'm bored of the initial setup of the scene. That's her first question. And her second question is, sometimes I don't want to see a scene, but only affirming and it puts me into a feeling state of the wish fulfilled. Can this be acceptable to the subconscious as well? Okay, two very good questions. The first question, is it okay for you to just imagine uh, another scene after one scene just go on to the next because you bought of the first one uh, There is a that's a yes and a no answer to that question um, Yes, because there's only one condition upon which we change a scene from one to another and that is when that scene is no longer feeling natural for us now you will know it is not feeling natural for you when after a couple of days of mentally practicing it you don't feel like it not that you're not feeling like the wish is fulfilled but you don't feel like that thing you're imagining is you like that is what you would be when the wish is fulfilled okay so it means you, you realize that you simply change the scene you can do that but not because you're bored of the first scene uh, if you feel like you're bored of the first scene, what happens when you're bored of the second one, and of the third one, and of the fourth one? Change, you keep changing them. And that is you still not dropping the desire. When you're trying to change your scene from one to another, you're going like, it's like you're having a distrust that your imagination will actually actualize the scene that you've imagined. So you don't want to have any distrust in this, okay? So that's why I said it's a yes and a no um, question. It's a yes because your feeling can confirm for you that this scene needs to be changed. You know that by not feeling natural. Okay? But it's a no if you're just trying to change it because you feel like you're bored of the first one. Very persistent assumption. Take on the attitude that Abdullah shared with us and that Neville also did share with us. Abdullah would say, I build it. I am willing it. And I will continue to wheel it until that which I have wheeled is perfectly externalized in my world. Take on that attitude. I have wheeled it. I am wheeling it. I will continue to wheel it until it is done. Alright? That's for the first question. And for the second question, in that... Uh, could you remember what the second question is again? Okay, she says, sometimes I don't want to see a scene, but only affirming oh, and, and right. it puts me into yes. a feeling. The inner speech is sufficient to realize the wish of yours. In fact, the inner speech is fundamental. You may not imagine a scene, but when you hold a speech, you're doing it. You're assuming it. And when you hold the inner speech up onto the point of conviction, it is done. You may not do something physically, um, rather, hold the mental scene intentionally, but your inner speech will hold a scene for you that you are unaware of because you're unconscious to it, but it's there. So, that's the answer to your question. It's totally okay to just use your inner conversations to assume a wish fulfilled. Alright. Thank you for this session of question and answers. I hope to see you again. Have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome, everyone.